Welcome to this Innovize training video. Uh, this is the final Infoorder Pro Quick Start tutorial video, uh, video number five, where we're going to be running a model and reviewing results. This will be steps eight through 12 in the Quick Start tutorial. Uh, we're going to be covering several things. First of all, uh, how to run a simulation. Uh, we'll be opening the Run Manager to do that, seeing the different tabs there. Secondarily, we'll be then reviewing the results using the map display tool, uh, which is a graphical way to see results. Then we'll be looking at output reports uh, from data filtering and sorting results, as well as output graphs uh, and how to see that. Uh, and then lastly, how you can print graphs and report results uh, or share those with other platforms so that you can see those and use them. Let's start out with uh, step eight on how to run a model simulation. If you haven't already, uh, if you don't have the quick start tutorial up and your model, your training model open, go ahead and do that and pause the video and do that now. Um, once you're ready, just go ahead and unpause it and we will continue. Uh, now, in order to run a model, we need to open the run manager. Uh, the run manager can be accessed uh, from the run button on the tutorial uh, right there, or there's a little running man uh, that is located on the model explorer. Both of those get you to the same place. Uh, that's the run manager. Uh, for the tutorial, we are going to be doing the standard tab. Uh, where there's other tabs you can see that are on there that uh, uh, are for different types of analyses, but for the type of run that we're going to be doing, we'll be using the standard tab on there. The default options that are included on there, the previous steps, we've already set those up for the way that uh, the tutorial is meant to be used. So there's no changes that you will need to do that. Um, once you press the little running man button that will run the model and then the color uh, right here of this uh, light will change if it is green that meant the model ran without any errors being reported if it's yellow it meant hey i was able to get results but there were some simulation errors that were found uh, that should be reviewed and then if it's a red button that tells you that something happened and it could not converge to a solution. Uh, that's the colors that it will show you there. So if we switch real quickly to the model, you can see here I've got my, my sample model up and running that we have set up before. So here on the Model Explorer, you can see that's where the run manager is. And I didn't mean to press that, just meant to show that. Um, but right there, there's your run button as well as right in the middle in the analysis group uh, that there's the run button there. Both of those will get you to the run manager uh, and that's what we will need to do. Uh, you can see in the standard tab, there's three options that are here. There's our report options. Uh, most of the time you won't need node and link reporting. I'm just going to go ahead and turn those off. Uh, that's on there, but uh, generally I would uh, check your network summary table, the warning messages, what generates those warnings that are usually the errors for the yellow light. You, if you don't have that checked, those won't be created. And this full hydraulic status will tell you what those are uh, so that you can see that. We already set up the simulation options, but as you can see, there's uh, in, in previous steps, uh, this is where you set up uh, most of the time you're looking on your general tab. We also set this up to do a water quality run. So those were there. Uh, and then we did our time settings uh, where we set this up as a 24 hour run. Uh, and then we adjusted uh, a couple of other things that are on there. I'm going to go ahead and put this. Uh, uh, I think I saved my changes under this 24 hour EPS. So it's got the quality time step and rule time step both at one tenth of our hydraulic time step. So I'm going to use that for the analysis. Uh, basically in this, if we change the base on there, that would be again 0.1, so 1 tenth. And then our rule time step, even though we're not using any rules, just for remembering that rule of thumb that those should always be 1 tenth or smaller of our hydraulic time step will be there. So we've got all those set up. 
Now in order to run our model, again, we're gonna press the little run button and you can see we get a green line. And then uh, there's a recent change that will also tell you the time and date of your last run, which can be handy so that you can just know, oh, okay, when was this last run done? It will tell you. And if you do wanna see that, that text report, it will show you how the model converged for each of the time sessions that it was done. Uh, or if we had a yellow light, this is the report that you would want to search. So that's how to run a model in the standard tab. Again, just open it up with by from the model explorer or from the ribbon, press the running man to run the model. And then also if you have errors and need to review it, you can review it in this little text report that's there. Uh, to close your run manager, you'll just hit the green OK button and those will be there. So that's basically step eight in our quick start tutorial. Uh, let's go back here to uh, our slides uh, and, and proceed on here. So step nine in the quick start tutorial is how to use the map display to color code elements uh, based on their output data. Now you can also color code elements based on their input data. Uh, as you see, when you open the model explorer, it will uh, give you two options, either to color by active output or by the database, which is the input data. Now the data, if you're using output data, will depend on what is defined in the model Explorer tab. So right next to that run button, it'll show you a little drop down of, hey, this is the current output that I am displaying uh, when you click on elements. So most of the time you'll want this to be on active standard. If you're running the standard tab run in the model, it'll be, hey, this is the last run that you've done. Uh, you want to keep this refresh output box checked. And the time that is selected in this little there's a drop down here, or you can pull across the slider on this if you want to do that. I often find the, the, the little drop down here where you select a time is a little more precise, so I tend to do that. But whatever is shown as my output source and the time, that is what is going to get color coded in the map display. So where do you find the map display? In the ribbon under the view group, there's a little painter's palette. That's the map display right there. So once you're there, that will open up this map display pop-up window. And that's where you can then color code things the way you want. So first of all, you're going to need to choose which element type you wish to color code. Uh, in the tutorial, we're going to do both junctions as well as pipes uh, based on their active output. Then you need to choose which source, input or output. Uh, for the tutorial, we're going to choose active output. And then you select the data field. That's this box right here. Which data field do you want me to color code by? Uh, in this case, we're going to choose chlorine, uh, the water quality output data. Uh, and then we, they want you to change, I think it's default is four classes. They want you to choose, use the little drop down and choose five classes. And then you'll need to hit the set breaks to actually change it from four to five down here. Uh, and then they want you to color code these, uh, blue, green, yellow, uh, pink and red, uh, all at 0.2, uh, breaks there. So 0 0.2, 0 0.4. 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and then uh, the last break is set automatically as the highest value that it finds. So that one will be uh, 1.2, uh, but that's all you do. Once you set those, you can either hit apply to make those changes. It'll color code it, but it will not close this window or the OK button. If that's the only element you want to color, then you would hit OK. That will apply the changes and then close the map display button. If you want to color code on the pipes, uh, we would hit that apply and then choose the pipe option right there. Uh, and when you go to the pipes, it does give you an additional checkbox uh, that says, do you want me to show the flow direction? We will check that on for this. That's essentially in Infowater Pro how you can do the flow arrows. They're actually in the map display now. Um, so we're going to choose show flow direction. And then uh, generally there's also options to add labels. One thing to note, if you are using 
uh, the current tutorial model, it does not have a spatial projection currently defined. We're working on changing that, but right now it does not. In Infwater Pro and in ArcGIS Pro uh, version 2.71, which is their current latest and below, that will not uh, uh, draw labels if there is no spatial projection defined. So just know that in this tutorial, until we can update that uh, to give it a dummy spatial projection, it won't allow you to label things. But normally, most of your models will have your spatial projection defined. So under the label properties, you can see there's classes, label properties. That's what we're talking about. If you go to your label properties, you can tell it, hey, I want you to label the value. And if I want to show the units associated with that, you can do that there. Uh, the map display and labels will update as you change your active time and or your active output, as long as those fields are still available. Um, so you can, well, try changing that, change the time just so you can see those color coded changes. If you ever are done, uh, with your map display, there's an icon that looks just like the painter's palette with a little blue arrow over it. That is called the reset display button that will clear that. And so you can find that also in the view group of the ribbon. So let's go back to our model here. And again, we're at active standard in the tutorial. They want you to change to hour 24. Uh, so right there, you can see you can drag this across to choose a different time. But if you're trying to get precise and you have a lot of them, I find a lot of times it's easier to select it in the drop down than it is to like get hour eight, you know, in here and know where that is. Uh, if you're trying to choose a specific hour, a little bit easier if you're going all the way to the end at 24. But again, that's there. So active standard 24. You can see the map display in the view group that's right there. So we will choose junction active output chlorine and then this one already has uh five classes i think in in uh years it'll probably start with four uh but you'll just choose five and hit set breaks that will adjust the number of groups that are there looks like the colors are already right we just need to adjust the breaks to match so 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.6 and 0 0.8 and like i said this last break is is populated automatically that's the highest value that it sees so we'll just leave that that's there um, and uh, we'll hit apply and you'll notice now we've got some color changes and they're showing those that are over here um, so and then if you want to you can actually save this uh, in here so let's call this uh, chlorine Junctions, I spelled that wrong. Didn't I? Chlor, uh, chlorine, uh, chlorine is this work? Junctions and hit OK so that if we wanted to reset that uh, and clear that, let me show you how you can recall that because this is also useful to know. So under the Operation tab, under Map Display, if you right click on this, you can say Refresh. Uh, or sorry, not refresh, but apply map display. And that is going to then apply that saved uh, settings that we had done there. So that's very handy that it can do that. We open back up our map display and we go to pipes now. Uh, again, the active output, chlorine, and we'll just need to adjust our breaks. Again, if you had four classes, go ahead and change that to five and hit the set breaks button uh, so that that's on there. So 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and 0.8, and leave the last one as a default setting that's on there. And then we want to check on this lower box right there. There's the show flow direction. Uh, and uh, we can also save that if we want. Chlorine pipe right there that that's on there and uh we're going to go ahead and since we saved it, it looks like it already applied it so i'm going to hit the okay and you can notice it's now if we scroll down over here and 
minimize some of these other elements so that we can see it's got the color coding based upon the setting of an element. So let's choose an element really quick here. So this is a pipe 20. It's got a chlorine of 1.15. So that would make it in this uh, red category that's right there. Uh, and that matches that color coding that's there. Uh, if we change this time, say to go to hour 13, you can see that is going to update it's color coding to match that. So if we click on here now, now that's 0.22 and we can see that's in this green group. So that shows up that way. It's a very handy, nice little way that you can adjust that, see results that are on there. Again, if you have a model with a spatial projection, you can add those labels and uh, uh, to the map display right now, since we're in a model that does not, um, uh, I'm going to uncheck those that are there. Same thing so that it's not trying to. I think that's why I got that little message that popped up earlier about the uh, the spatial projection because uh, it uh, was undefined. So it was unable to draw those labels that are there. But pretty handy that that has that there and that you can do those different things. So continuing on here, uh, I'm going to move this back to where it had us, where it wanted us at hour 24. Now we're going to move on to step 10. In step 10, we are now going to do, uh, uh, hold on, let me make sure we're going to go and look at some output tables. So to see the output tables, we need to open the report manager. Now the re report manager is found in the view group on the ribbon, and it looks like this and for its icon. Uh, if you open it up, it will show you um, this little pop-up window, and you can see if I've got different output runs that I've done, I can choose which one I do. Most of the time, you will maintain this on the active standard, but depending on your type of run or if I wanted to see some results from something else that I've run without switching to that scenario, you could uh, choose that as an option. For the tabular reports, uh, you need to choose the tabular report tab over here on the right, and it'll list all of the tables that are available, the output tables for the current run that was completed. Then in this section down here, it'll say what data scope do you want me to open? Do you want me to open for every element that was there? Do you want to select the elements yourself? Or if you have a domain defined where uh, open just the domain elements, you can do that as well. Um, what we're going to be doing in here is opening the active standard and we're going to open the junction report. Uh, and this is going to be for all elements. And once you're in a report, it will close this down and open the report manager button right here. Uh, you can choose which time that you want to show, like right here, they're at hour zero. You could change it to hour eight, hour 24, whichever part that's on there, and it'll update the results that are shown down here. And then if you want to get back to the open window, you just press this new button or double click on it, and that will bring you right back to this little open window. Um, uh, let's go ahead and do that and we'll get to filtering next. So if we go to our report manager again in the view section, um, and we're going to do new and you can see, I want to go to active standard. I'm going to choose the junction report. So you can see there's graphical reports. We'll talk about those in a minute. And then we're going to do the complete report graph. That's right there. And then we're just going to press this open button down here. So once we open it, you'll see that we have got, now we can choose a time in which to see results. Uh, let me just expand that so that you can see the whole thing that's on there. Uh, and if I want to open a new report, I just, uh, actually not a double click, it's just a single click that's there. Um, sometimes people will also do the little drop down and say, hey, open the output report graph that's there. Um, all those are kind of useful things that you can do. Uh, now, if we want to 
uh, filter and choose certain reports in there or sort the results. Let's talk about how to do that really quickly. Uh, so you can see that once you open a report that's there, if there's some of those results that I want to use a query to select specific results, I can use this little filter button. It kind of looks like a yellow funnel, um, but uh, I can press that and that data filtering button will open up something that I can choose to say, hey, like in this case, show me only or select the results where chlorine was greater than 0.75. And then I can add that to my data filter. Once it's listed here, I can hit apply. Now you can add more uh, if you so desire, um, but in this case, we're just gonna add one data filter and we're gonna hit apply. Once you do that, it's gonna tell you how many records were chosen that met that criteria and you can hit OK. Uh, and then if you so desire, you can save those results as a selection set. As a selection set, that can be useful because then I can put those elements that met that criteria into the domain. If I want to find them, where are they on the map? That's pretty handy. Uh, then secondarily, if you want to sort your results that are there, uh, you can choose a column. Uh, just select a column, and then once you click on it, you can sort those from low to high or high to low. So this would be low to high. This would be high to low. Uh, that often can be very handy if you're trying to see the highest pressure, lowest pressure, highest chlorine, lowest chlorine, uh, to just find those easily. So if we go back to our model really quickly here, uh, we can choose the chlorine field. Um, and I noticed that I had something strange happen here. So um, uh, I'm just going to reopen that table right here. And then there's our filter button. So I'm, I'm selecting the chlorine at hour 24. And then let's choose the filtering button and that data filtering. And we will choose as our output chlorine equals or um, let's see, they want us to do chlorine is less than 0.75, if I recall here. Let's go back to here. Greater than 0.75, okay. My apologies there. Go back to our model. Greater than 0.75. And now once I get the three values the way I want them, I'm pressing add. Uh, and then I hit apply and it'll tell me how many records met that criteria. And I'm going to hit OK. Uh, and if I wanted to verify that, let's say, hey, let's sort these ascending. You can see only these two records that weren't checked over here did not meet that filtering criteria that we had. Uh, and if I want to save these checked values as a selection set, I can go into here. I need to make a new selection and we can say chlorine greater than uh, 0.75. Let's see if it'll let me do that. And then I'm going to hit OK. So it'll save those values that are there. Um, and if we reset our display here, then you can go into your domain manager, choose that selection set from the list and say add. And that added all those nodes that at hour 24 were um, greater than uh, 0.75 for chlorine. So you can see this junction was only 0.7 and it looks like this other one was over here. Was it 0.54? Uh, this one is at 0.94 greater than 0.75. So you can see how handy that can be uh, to be able to make that and to see that to be higher. Uh, that's very useful. Um, another hint that I find if you double click on your, your junction that's over here, uh, I'm going to go to the properties for that. And if I want to make the size of my junctions that were selected um, larger, that can often make it much easier to see these, especially the larger your model is, to make those stand out somewhere between seven or eight is often very useful to do that. 
I find same thing if you double click on the domain pipe itself and just go to properties you can make that two or three um, that way once things are in the domain let me just add a pipe to our domain so you can see that it just makes us stand out a little bit that can be very useful very helpful to see there so that you can see in the report manager uh, and if I made some changes reran my model if I want to update these results based on changes I just need to go here and do a refresh all and that's going to refresh uh, any output changes that I've made uh, since the run uh, so that that's very handy because those once you reopen that uh, hit that refresh all that's going to refresh those results based on that last run that was done so uh, key button to see that's on there um, that's that's very handy uh, you know uh, just to open that again but that's very very useful there so if we go back now we've talked about uh, tables and filtering those are a couple of very useful things now for graphic an element uh, if we want to graph a particular element uh, from the report manager itself we can actually open back up the report manager and look for a new output graph but now we need to go to the graph report tab and that'll show us which ones are available now if you choose a single element to graph it's going to make you choose hey which element did you want me to do and just you manually select that that's what we will do because uh, you can't graph everything if you have a domain currently active it will show that as a dark option but if there's no domain yet selected it's not going to uh, allow you to do that those are more often used in these junction group tank group if I have a group of elements I want to graph together usually you'll do that with the domain so in here we're going to choose that active standard junction graph and just choose any junction and we're going to graph that and you can change which field is actually graphed here by this little drop down that's right there so right it's first output field is demand that's the first output that will show but you can change that as so desired so let's do that really quickly so if we go back to our report manager and I hit new I'm going to go to the graph report and I'm going to choose a junction graph which will uh, force me to do a selected element and we'll just choose let's say that element right there you can see there was no demand on it uh, we can look at how the head changed, the pressure changed throughout the run, or the chlorine that changed throughout the run. So it's very handy. You can see we had initially, and I think our last video set all the initial quality for elements at 0 0.5. So that's why it started. Uh, all new water was coming in at 1.2. So at some point, all of it went to that quality because it was coming from there. Um, Another way you can graph an element is if you select it here and it's the active element that's there. You can use this graph button right there. Let's see if I can uh, highlight that there so you can graph that element. That's something that people do quite a bit. Uh, very useful. Again, if you rerun the model and you've got any tables that are here, make sure to press that refresh all so that it'll update that after the run very handy uh, that you can do that now last thing is talking about printing graphs and reports or copying data so that you can then paste it in something else that's something that you'll often do quite a lot that's very useful so if i'm on a graph there's a print icon that will bring up a print report and actually print it just as you view it as well as you can use the copy button so that I can digitally copy that and then I can use control V to paste it into something else whether it's an email uh, Excel Microsoft Word uh, whatever you want to do that can be very handy so we'll show you how you can do that uh, also in printing tables uh, you can print that as well there's a print button for the report um, or um, something that's very useful if you want to copy the data that's in there in the upper left hand corner of the table you'll see this little triangular 
icon that will select all of the elements in the table so that you can either then hit the copy button or just use control C and then you can paste that data wherever you desire it uh, whether it's Excel or Word whatever uh, you desire uh, so let's go into the model and let's just show you how that is done so here uh, if I am on this graph and I wanted to graph it you can see it'll ask me okay uh, you know, it's a full page. I want a border, uh, landscape, or portrait. Uh, you know, and then when I hit print, it's going to, in this case, because my default printer currently is a PDF, so that's why it's saying, hey, go to there. Um, but that's how you can do that. Or I can hit copy uh, so that if we just go to a, a random document here, uh, let's go file, new, drag this over here. And so if I want to then paste it, you can see then it just copied and pasted that into there. That's very, very useful uh, to know that one could do that. Uh, as well as if we go to a report here, you can see that once again, we have got uh, different options here at the top. And one of those is the print button. So this will ask me, hey, you know, what's the format that I want that to look? Uh, and then uh, I guess there's a setup that was there. Uh, that's probably where it's going to tell you what your print is. Again, my default printer is this Adobe PDF. That's why it, it asked me to save it. But you can change that to a, a printer uh, if you want that. You can also preview that so that you can see uh, what that is. And you can stretch this out so it's a little bit bigger here. Uh, mine's a little bit tiny. Uh, but you can see this is what it would look like that's on there. So that's very handy if, if there's some way you want to do that. Or again, here's that little icon um, right there. That little triangle will select all the data so that then I can either use the copy button here. And then uh, if I want to go, I think it's easier when you're doing this to copy tables and paste them into Excel. Uh, you can see that's there. Let's go ahead and open another uh, tab there. So if we're here, I can also use the Control C key um, if I want to then uh, copy that and then paste it. You can see both of those do the same. Uh, you can also, if you want to, hey, I just want to copy this. I did a Control C. Uh, let's go into a new column. I can copy just a single column, or if I wanted to do just a group of data. This will not give me the headers, uh, but it will do that, um, which is handy, uh, so that I can then Control C, Control V, paste in just that data. Gives you a lot of different options that are there. Uh, that's pretty handy uh, for being able to use. That is going to conclude the InfoWater Pro Quick Start tutorial here in video number five.